Afternoon, Leo. How are you doing? Hello, Rehan. Doing great. What about you? Awesome. We're live on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah. today it's quite exciting. We're presenting one of our first official solutions, feature prioritization app from Locodera. Right. Excited? Yeah, I'm very excited. This one is super cool. <laughs> yes, you've been working very hard on this one. Um, and True. Delighted to, to, to show our audience today what this one's uh, all about. So I'm sure they'll be very pleased. We're live, so feel free to, to comment uh, mm -hmm. on our feed. Um, any questions, any thoughts? I think we're going to be running for just under half an hour today to demonstrate mm -hmm. uh, this app. So I think we've already got a slide up which um, is giving a summary of what this app is. So it's a plug and play solution for feature prioritization. Feature prioritization, um, if you're building products or doing agile, then this is something which you're commonly involved in. And this is about making sure you are prioritizing the development of certain features before others. It can get quite confusing when you have a big backlog uh, knowing which features to develop first and which ones to push further down um, your development roadmap. So this is a plug and play solution. It integrates nicely with Azure DevOps or Jira, uh, and for that matter, any other data source which uh, connects to your Power App. Uh, we've got a rich and interactive user experience as we'll be demonstrating in a few moments. And the beauty of this app is that it really automates the, the prioritization of your features as you use the app in real time. And of course, because this is Power Apps and because it's a Dataverse solution, um, it's highly customizable and we've built it in a way where you can customize and extend according to your needs. And what we'd like to do is immediately jump into a a demonstration of what it's about, and then maybe we'll we'll answer a few FAQs about the app. Um, how's that sound, Leo? Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, awesome. Right. So let me try sharing my screen, and uh, hopefully, what you're now seeing, Leo, if you're my witness, is the um, app in front of us. Yeah, perfect. I can see the the whole board. Okay, awesome. So this is a our feature prioritization app, and the whole point of this is to prioritize your backlog into something which um, determines what you want to be developing first as a product team versus stuff that you want to be doing later. And mm -hmm. so what you're immediately uh, presented with is a matrix. And in this matrix that we're looking at at the moment, Leo, it's about classifying your backlog based on how often your features are going to get used and mm -hmm. which users they're going to get used by. Mm -hmm. So if a feature, for example, is used by all of the users all of the time, mm -hmm. then that's fantastic and it will obviously go in the top right and it should score the highest in terms of prioritizing your backlog. To the yeah. contrary, if a feature is not used by anyone and it's not used mm -hmm. any at a time, then it appears in the bottom left. So you understand the game, Leo? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. There's an right. interesting way of uh, measuring uh, with numbers uh, how important is the, the feature and this just one of the bars, right? We have um, more two to, to show next. Exactly. So, yeah. so this uh, matrix here is about usage versus frequency, but we've got two other prioritization uh, matrixes with different perspectives, which we'll also be using to prioritize these features. So, what I've got on screen on the on the right hand side is our backlog. Um, I think later you're going to be showing how the backlog gets imported mm -hmm. into the app. What I mm -hmm. want to demonstrate very quickly is, 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 the, is the app and the functionality as an end user and how we okay. use it. So let's jump straight in to prioritizing our backlog, Leo. So uh, I think we're building, in this case, a, uh, an app for a hotel system. And okay. uh, we've got a very few uh, features loaded 
in from our backlog, which will allow us to, to hopefully, between us, make some decisions which we can plot on our matrix. Mm -hmm. So let's start with what I think will be our easiest one, which requires least debate, right? User mm -hmm. registrations to the system, right? I would mm -hmm. argue that this is a feature which probably needs to be used by all users pretty much all the time. Um, would you agree? Uh, yeah, I'm sure to agree with you. This one is <laughs> quite important. All right, so no yeah. squabbling over this one. So what we can do mm -hmm. as we're demonstrating is simply drag and drop from the backlog column into any part. And in this case, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll stick it up here on the top right. Right, so reservations, again, um, this is going to be very important, I would have thought. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have thought most of the user base um, would be making reservations. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not to say they'll be logging in and making reservations all the time. So um, yeah. my view on this, and uh, I would say it's probably used by all of the users, mm -hmm. but, and I would say it's either some of the time or most of the time. I'll let you have the casting vote on this one, Leo. What do you think? Yeah, let's say most of the time. Okay, so we'll, we'll okay. put it here. That's that's where we're, that's where we're agreeing for now. Okay, um, conference room bookings, which I think is a bit of a niche feature. We've only got mm -hmm. you know a few of these in our fictional hotel. Mm -hmm. um, so my view on it is we should be looking to have it as I would say it's a few of the users mm -hmm. some of the time. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Huh. Not everyone yeah. is going to use the, the conference room, so we can, can say a yeah. few yeah. users. Yeah. Check in from your phone. We know like phones these days probably accounts for 40 to 50 percent of how people interact with websites. So I think mm -hmm. for me, um, uh, I would say some of the users and most of the time is where I would go. I'd go somewhere like this or mm -hmm. here. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think? Should we leave it here? It's either one to the left or one to the right. One to the right, okay. <laughs> yeah? All right. Now, this last feature, Leo, um, this is where we're using smart technology, our IoT technology, our sensors to uh -huh. um, really collect more data from, from our hotel rooms. Um, uh -huh. But um, I'm not sure about this one um, and, and kind of feeding that information back to to our users. I think there's only a a subset of admin users who would be using this in our app. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely heading towards the bottom left on this one. Yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sorry, but it goes there. Right. Happy with that, Leo? Yeah, I'm happy with that. OK, so to your point, um, this, this was one way of scoring uh, mm -hmm. our features. Let's move on to the next board, which is looking at how aligned these features are from a company perspective and user goals and just to save time on this one mm -hmm. um, because i think we've kind of showcased how interactive uh, mm -hmm. this is and how you can drag into the qu uh, quadrants but it's the same um, concept of dragging and dropping around based on um, how aligned uh, these features are based on your company goals and what impact they're going to have, um, mm -hmm. you can drag them around. Um, so I would say, although there's a high impact on company goals with this one, because they're really keen to, to have these sensors in, mm -hmm. um, in terms of user goals, I would probably say it's a low impact. Yeah. So that's user why I'm having problems. Yeah. Won't yeah. really care much about yeah. it. Yeah. Now, in the interest of time, um, we're not really going to pr um, prioritize these ones properly. So I'm just going to randomly move these around the quadrant. Not unless you are have a strong view right now, Leo, on, on <laughs> these. Feel free to interject. Otherwise, I'm just going to yeah. them in a random position. One interesting thing, yeah. I don't remember if 
we mentioned uh, yeah. is uh, the score starts in zero, which is the left bottle, and goes up to three on the top right, correct? Yes, I think that's an important point, and mm -hmm. I think um, we're going to come on to the um, real-time dashboard in, in a few seconds, but mm -hmm. as we're moving these uh, features into their respective quadrants, um, the highest scoring place is the top right, and that scores you three points for that feature. And on mm -hmm. the bottom left, that's your zero points. And we're incrementally, depending on your position, moving up by half a point. So the range of the scoring is from zero to three. The green zones are the highest scoring areas. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the, the kind of middle zones with the blue um, is kind of where your two scoring point zones are. So um, that will become clearer in a second. Yeah. So let's move on to our um final board and this is and you know perhaps the most interesting one where we look at how much effort is it going to take to build a feature versus okay. what's the reward on that so again mm -hmm. um yeah this is moving things around which i'm not gonna take too seriously at the moment mm -hmm. And uh, we will ultimately go through to our ranking. Mm -hmm. And this is the beauty of the app. As you and your stakeholders are making those decisions, key decisions on prioritizing those features from those different perspectives on that matrix, what's really happening behind the scenes is that there's some real-time scoring being aggregated up for you to the point where you've now got a prioritized backlog, which you can immediately um, go ahead broadcasting your results from and, 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 and justify why you've made those decisions because you've prioritized in a systematic way um, and you, ha you haven't had to go back and, and, and do the analysis across all these dimensions. It's all done for you um, in real time without any delay and of course you can still go back and make adjustments and this chart mm -hmm. is is there for you all the time which is which is pretty cool right so mm -hmm. just going back now you can see that's that's changed and from the rogue exercise which we've just done reservations mm -hmm. comes out on top and our go green feature which we suspected mm -hmm. might come out low, has, has come out last um, for now. And you can quite helpfully download this um, and plonk it into somewhere else or share it with your colleagues on Teams or, or whatever you want to do um, with that. Leo, have I summarized the gist of the app? In a yeah, yeah. succinct way. Perfect um, presentation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. We, what I didn't cover is things like being able to um, discard or, or actually mm -hmm. commit your changes, which we didn't do in this case. But mm -hmm. those are pretty obvious features which um, you'd want to do once you finished your exercise. Mm -hmm. um, other things you can do is hide the backlog from you to create more of a full screen experience. You can mm -hmm. even collapse the navigation. So you get maximum real estate to do the work that you're looking to do. Yeah. So as you showed, I think in a very short amount of time, we could uh, discuss three different dimensions of importance to these features and yeah. get into uh, a conclusion and maybe get uh, some insights from it, which is awesome. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's very quick. It's interactive. It's efficient, it saves you time, it automates how you prioritize your backlog. Um, we want to spend the next few minutes, I guess, talking in a bit more detail about this low code area solution. We're saying it's a plug and play solution, but I guess one of the key questions our audience is already asking is um, how, how does the how does the backlog come in to the app? Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. Leo, at this point, I think I'm gonna hand over to you to answer some of those questions around how we get the backlog into the oh. app. All right, well, let's go for uh -huh. it. 
Okay. Right. I also have the board here, the same board Rahan was using. And maybe we can start uh, showing the, the styling tool or uh, or data source yeah. in, in Azure. Yes. Whatever. So we have an installation app we, um, mm -hmm. because this is a plug and play uh, solution after you've imported it in. And so, yes, why don't you take us through uh, this mm -hmm. um, installation mm -hmm. app, which is the companion configuration app, which makes it really easy to get this up and running in your environment. Yeah, so our, our main idea behind uh, the, the creation of this solution was to provide something that is really uh, custom to to the, the team's need, the, the organization needs. And what you can do is uh, to to import the solution to your environment and quickly uh, deploy it. So I'm going to show how, how it's done. This is our installing tool, which is uh, in the package of solution. So I can start with a, a typical installation that is more standard. Uh, there is no much customization. And here I can, can select one of the data source I want you to work with uh, that can be Azure. Azure DevOps or Jira as we have here. But of course you could have any kind of data source since it's a database table. All you have to do is uh, use a data flow or a power automate or uh, whatever mechanism you want to uh, fill the data. Uh, so we, we just create this, this interface to, to uh, get some context, context around it and show how, how easy it can be. And right yes. here, yeah. So Leo, yeah, well, I think it's important to say, so we've, we've, we've got a couple mm -hmm. of, um, out of the box, um, integrated, um, plug and play import solutions. One of these is DevOps. Um, and mm -hmm. typically this is, um, I think it's between DevOps and Jira. They're the most commonly used tools to that most enterprises mm -hmm. use to capture their backlog in. And, uh, I guess mm -hmm. what you're going to be demonstrating here is how we've made it really easy to connect to, to DevOps and pull in your backlog, right? Um, but for maybe some of our viewers who aren't familiar with um, Azure DevOps, maybe we can just quickly wander over to, to DevOps just to, to show people what what a DevOps mm -hmm. back, backlog looks like and then come back to here to, 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 to complete the import. Okay, right. Uh, so I have another tab here, uh, Azure DevOps opened and we have this concept of organizations and inside our organizations, we have projects. And as you can see, we have two projects here. One is uh, the smart hotel that we just uh, present the, the features previously. And we have this other one called product features. And if I go in this, in this project and one of the, the features that we have inside of it is the ability to create uh, boards and we can see in the boards, the, the features. So the, the, this board with the features and the, the status of each of them. And yeah. what else Rahan, we can say about? Well, there's not a lot to say other than there, there's your backlog, <laughs> there's your there's your features. Uh, I know people use DevOps for lots more uh, than yeah. for the purposes of this exercise. I think all that mm -hmm. the audience needs to know is that there's your backlog. This is where it's mm -hmm. typically stored and, and mastered. And what we're going to be showcasing is how we can bring that into our app through a few clicks, um, mm -hmm. which you're going to demonstrate now. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, this being said, we can, I think we can to, to installation too. And we can see here's that, that we just need to select from the dropdown, the organization and the project, as we, we showed uh, previously, I want to get uh, these features from this project called product features team. And I also need to provide a, a query ID. This is yeah. just uh, the sort of items I want you to retrieve. So I, here I have all features. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something? Uh -huh. Yeah, just yeah. to mention that that's how the features are organized in, in DevOps. People can create different queries and views mm -hmm. off the features. And again, um, once you're in here, you can select the right one to, to import in if, if you've got more than one query or whoever's managing the backlog and administering it has got different queries 
you just need to select one which is going to pull in the features that you want but what's great and i think you're going to show this next is once you hit import you, you're presented right with the features that you actually want to import in yeah and this i think this uh, uh, a nice way of you know getting just the 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 work items the features that you really want to to bring in and after after that uh inside our, our tool you can also select which of the features you want to to bring in so here's is the result of our query which is all of these items that we can see azure devops board and I can select from here which of these I want or I do not want. So I can select all if I want all, and then just let's hit have, let's have them. Let's have them all, Leo. I'm I'm feeling greedy today. <laughs> and this is how the the magic <laughs> begins, right? So if I hit import here, uh, it's going to to start to import all these features to our database table. And I can see the features are important. Uh, after that, uh, there's some few settings uh, that it is going on on the on the background. Yeah, like so this the is just boards, the things. rows, the columns. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is getting our whole um, system of matrices ready and getting the the features that we're importing in loaded mm -hmm. into the app, right? And yeah, again no one really needs to do anything here it's just getting things ready and mm -hmm. again this just takes no more than um 30 seconds to to a minute mm -hmm. to to run through and hopefully after which the mm -hmm. app will be ready to use right yeah so we are in the last here uh loading the board definitions and after that uh we can go back to the prioritization app and we should see this these features there already so let's wait a few more seconds and all set so right now if we go back here uh, and refresh this page everything is going to be loaded again and i hope to see all the the features loaded here Right, so if I open the backlog now, now I can see all of our imported. So we just change from one project to, to another. Awesome, right. So yeah. that's how easy it is to get the app installed and ready to use with your Azure mm -hmm. DevOps back backlog all mm -hmm. in less than two minutes, which is very impressive. And you're good to go and immediately start um, prioritizing like we demonstrated earlier on. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, right. So um, we mentioned that the solution is quite extensible and it's built on a Dataverse um, architecture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess we just want to show people very quickly um, what that looks like um, for those mm -hmm. that are interested in these kinds of details, I guess. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, I know in your backpack or somewhere you've got um, uh, an ERD an entity yeah. relationship diagram which shows us the the database uh, sorry the the dataverse table and yeah i have here not sure if you're seeing already yeah yeah okay okay, okay. yeah so, so. Uh, i i think uh, the, the the main here is that we is a data model in order mm -hmm. to make the the application uh, scalable and very uh, customizable because uh we have cells configurations, columns, rows, uh, mm -hmm. board configuration. Everything that uh, is related to to that can be uh, in this in these tables. Yeah. So it's just a few simple tables. You can see we've got one for features, the positioning of the uh, features themselves, and then the other configuration tables are more about the settings for the boards and the matrixes that you see on the different screens and how big they are, how wide they are, what, what the colors should be. And also the interesting one for me is the cell configuration one. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe we can just talk a bit about that in a bit more detail because we mentioned earlier on leo that uh, we have a scoring mechanism mm -hmm. depends so if your features in 
in the bottom left, for example, it scores nothing. If your feature is mm -hmm. in the top right of most quadrants, it will then score um, more points. But if mm -hmm. people wanted to adjust those uh, points and the, the range of points, they could do that, yeah. right, by um, amending right. the data in this table. So how do we do that? Right. Uh, let me show you in a second. So here's our solution. It's loading. Right. So you have all the tables and the, the, the feature you mentioned, uh, the points of each cell is stored on this table called configuration. Mm -hmm. I love this new view of uh, Dataverse solutions. Dataverse. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot more It wasn't helpful, like this before. <laughs> no. No, it's, it's getting right. more and more, more friendlier to, to actually use natively almost, yeah. Yeah, so here in sales configurations, I can see that we have some of the attributes of each cells. So the point of that cell and also the cell background. Yeah. And if we adjust uh, the values here, this would reflect in the way the, the, the system is calculating uh, the, the ranking of the, the features. Yeah, so that's all pretty straightforward. You can see there's three boards which we demonstrated, and it's just a case of for each each cell adjusting the score if you want to change the scoring mechanism. Um, mm -hmm. The other the other thing, just very quickly um, uh, before we close out, is mm -hmm. we demonstrated the Azure DevOps integration, and also there's a Jira one. But of course, it's just a Dataverse table, right? Which means if people wanted to uh, presumably import from other data sources or do it themselves, mm -hmm. it's just a case of importing data into that table. Is that right? Yeah, which is awesome because th there is nothing complicated about this. Uh, this table we just need to provide uh, a name for the feature and uh, ID, which is relying on, on the, the system ID. So yeah. here I, I I'm using the ID that is coming from Azure DevOps, and yeah. that's all. That's all. So you can import this data from whatever you want. Yeah. So if you wanted to have a separate process which you manage to to import um, or, or push and pull the data from, it's just this one simple table. Mm -hmm. So I think with mm -hmm. that we've shown. Um, I guess a high level overview of, of the back end of the solution. It's well architectured, it's pretty neat. And mm -hmm. one of the other things which we'll be doing is um, extending the app in subsequent versions with more configurability for end users in the mm -hmm. installation and setup app to make it even easier if, mm -hmm. uh, if they don't want to come um, to Dataverse to change some of those values. So, I believe that's all we wanted to cover off um, today. This mm -hmm. is our um, feature prioritization app, Dataverse Native. It's plug and play, and it's available to all low code era subscribers from next week. Um, and actually, we're also going to be running a very limited first come first serve offer for anyone that's interested in this app the first five uh people slash organizations that get in touch with us will we're, we're going to give it away for for free so you can use this app for absolutely nothing of course you'll need your power apps licensing in place um but for the first five lucky ones that contact us um we're going to give this available to you for free wow. so, um, <laughs> yeah yeah um so that's the that's the that's the offer we're making and um for anyone that wants to know more about the app please get in touch with us um i'm sure some of you will have questions and and uh, after you watch this back on demand get in touch with us it's going to be available next week to to download for low code era subscribers and import into the environment um, and start using immediately. And if you have any other questions in the meantime over what it can do, or perhaps some of the other solutions um, that are going to be coming online in the in the coming weeks, do let us know. Um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything before we close, Leo. 
Yeah, I want to add one thing is uh, we have many features to, to come yet. This is just version one, right? So yep, there is, is uh, many cool things that we are already planning about this uh, app. So yeah. I'm excited about the, the future of that. Yeah, yeah. And we'd love to get some user feedback, comments, and uh, hopefully our community will will allow us to extend this app and add even more value for them. Brilliant. All right, let's leave it there. Um, I think we're just a minute over mm -hmm. half an hour, which is what I wanted to stick to. And um, we'll see you next time, Leo. Thank you so much for helping me demo this today. All right. Thank you, Rahan. See you next time. See you next time. See you later.